So hi, welcome to Local Hack Day. My name is Jack and I'm going to be giving a talk on an introduction to web development with Flask. So just a little bit about me. I'm a um, lead mobile engineer at Beam. Uh, I typically do iOS development, although I'm very comfortable with Python and Java, which is why I'm giving this Flask talk. And uh, if you want to follow along, my uh, the final code and a manuscript of the talk, you can find it here, github.com slash jackcook slash flask talk. So let's get started. In this talk, I'm really going to cover what, it, what Flask is, um, how to install it, some basic usage along uh, with templating and URL handling. So yeah, what is Flask? Um, Flask is a micro framework used for web development. It was built upon the WorkSog library for uh, URL requests and Jinja2 for its use of templating. It was, uh, fortunately, it was created with ease of use in mind for the developers, which means that in order to do a lot of things with Flask, you really don't have to write that much code. And uh, it's very simple uh, to get started. So to install Flask, uh, you can use the, uh, install it from the Python package index, as you would for most other Python frameworks. Um, in your terminal, it's just pip install Flask. Uh, depending on your setup, you might need to use sudo, but in a lot of cases, you shouldn't have to. Um, as you can see here, I already have it installed, but that is the command that you would use to install it. Uh, and if you don't have pip installed, if you see pip command not found, you can install it using easy install. So now for the basics, I'm going to get right into it. So I'm going to make a file, uh, app.py. And to get started, uh, you're going to have to import the Flask framework. So this Flask with uh, the uppercase F is a Flask object and will represent your website. So you can create a variable for your website like this using the name variable in Python. And in order to run your website, you just have to detect if the name is equal to main and call app.run. So just for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to recommend that you turn on debugging. Um, it makes it a lot easier to debug your errors. It'll spit a stack trace onto your website, which is why you don't want to do it in production. But while you're developing the website, it's very useful. So here, this is the basis of a website in Flask. If I run this file, it won't do anything. Um, but here, this is the URL it gives you. And if I put this into my web browser, it's a 404 because I have nothing set up. So if I want to fix that, in, Py in Flask, you create things called routes. And this slash denotes just the slash after the URL. It's the root of your web page. Uh, it went offline. Um, and so under that route, you're going to create a definition or a function. And the return value of this function is going to be what's interpreted by the web browser. So if I run the file again and load up the web page, you're going to see hello world, because that's what I returned in this function. So since this is, inter this is literally what's interpreted by the web browser, this, uh, you can put HTML here. So if you wanted some formatting, I can put a header here, like so. And if I reload the page, it's a header. And obviously, you wouldn't want to keep all of your HTML code in a variable in your Python file. So I'm going to introduce a topic called templating. And with templating, so Flask is built on Jinja2, which is a really powerful templating framework in and of itself. It allows for the easy access of Python variables in your web page and allows you to create dynamic web pages with updating content. So to do this, you're going to want to create a new folder in the same folder as your Python file, and you're going to want to call it templates. In here, this is where you put your HTML code. This uh, index.html file, you can create a website as you normally would, just uh, with the extra added benefits of Flask. And so 
if I made practically the same website, I can, uh, I can render this. this. This is a template considered by Flask. So if I were to render it here, I can use the render template function in Flask. And since render template is a function that's provided by Flask, you're going to need to import it. Otherwise, it's going to be an error. And now this is telling Flask to render index.html, and it's going to look in the templates folder. So if uh, you make sure your site's still running, and then reload the page, it's going to say, hello, local hack day, because that's what I put in here. So with templates, you can, uh, you can do a lot, really, because uh, the render template function takes a theoretically infinite number of keys and values. And so if I had a website with content that updates constantly, such as maybe a stock website, I can say the stock price is $75.23. I can pass that variable to my, in my HTML file by just doing this. And so now this price variable is accessible in my HTML file. If I wanted to show the price of a stock, I can just do it like this. And these opening and closing curly braces are what's telling Flask to, to retrieve a variable. So make sure your page is still running and reload the page. The current stock price is $75.23. Um, another very, uh, oh, OK. Another very common use of uh, this in Flask is being able to render CSS. And in a traditional website, you're going to use the link tag and just do this to uh, get, your H get your CSS files. But since, H since this HTML file is being rendered from the templates folder, Flask actually wouldn't know where style.css is. It doesn't know where to look for it. So to get around this, you're going to use the same method that we used here with the curly braces and call URL for. Uh, and then st static file name equals style.css. And so in the URL for function, static, the first argument, is the name of the folder. So we're going to have to make that folder as well. And in here, I'm going to put style.css. Uh, I can set the body. I'll make it obvious that CSS is being rendered. Set the background to green. And so now. Flask knows exactly where to look for style.css. So if I make sure the web page is still running and reload the page, the background is green. And it's calling from the CSS file. So just to make the text easier to read, I'm going to make it white for the rest of the tutorial, but the talk. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how you can render variables into your web page. Now, another cool thing with templating is that you can actually call uh, compact or compound statements such as if for or while so if I wanted so here's the thing if you're retrieving this stock price from a website or something if an exception occurred that fail, made your request fail and you have nothing to show for the stock price it's very likely that it's going to be null or in Python none and what happens here is if you reload the page, it's going to say the current stock price is none. And that might not make sense to your user. They're going to be like, what, what happened? I, I don't know what this means. So you're going to want to, in many cases, catch for these kinds of occurrences with an if statement. To run code blocks, or blocks of code, in Flask, uh, you can use the curly brace and then a percent sign to do things such as if price. And that's just Python code. It, uh, it's telling you if price is existent or not null. And you can also use things like else to, uh, because then this is saying if price is a variable with an assigned value, it'll display this. 
But if it's not, you can say something like, the stock price is currently unavailable. And you're going to want to remember to end your if statement like that. And now if I load the page, since the stock price is still none, we're assuming that an exception occurred, it's going to say that the stock price is currently unavailable. But if I have a stock price to show the user, then it should show the current stock price. So as I mentioned just a minute or two ago, Flask also has, uh, or Jinja2, the templating engine, also has support for for loops. So if I had an array, say, of strings, let's say uh, I want to show someone all these frameworks that I've been hearing about. We have uh, Flask, there's Django, uh, Rails. Um, I can, as I said earlier, the render template function takes as many key values, key and values as you need. And so I can just pass another variable to my HTML file like this. So now the frameworks variable is accessible in my HTML file as well. And I can loop through it with a for loop. Um, let's say I wanted to display it in a table. So this, uh, this iteration, uh, this for loop, runs once every, uh, for every item you have in that array. And it's calling from frameworks. So if I had a table, I can then t put each framework in its own table row. And again, you can use two curly braces without the percent sign just to call a variable. Uh, and in this case, it's framework. And so if I run this, then I have a table with Flask, Django, and Rails. So, and then obviously, you can use the same tactic that we used up there to make sure that Frameworks is indeed a variable that you can access just to be safe. And so yeah, that's, uh, that's about as far as I'm going to get with templating. Um, so let's move on to URL handling. So with Flask, it's very easy to set up multiple routes to your web page, such as what goes after the .com or the dot, your URL, uh, your domain extension. Um, so this could be something like slash search, slash data, anything you want to set up, really. And I'm, I can show you like this. So as we did up here, we can create another route to your website with app.route. Uh, let's do data. So we can create another function. And the return value of this will be what shows up when you call slash data to your web page. I think the website crashed. So I'll just start it up again, go to slash data, and it returns data. Um, so it's also very easy to read URL parameters. Um, if you need to say, well, say the, say you're searching for something on your web page, and it's very common with searching to include the query in the URL. So if I wanted to search for something like web development, Safari. Um, yeah, so this is the this is the get parameter, and I can read that like this. Uh, this would be using the request variable in Python. In in Flask. And since request is a variable in Flask, we're going to need to import that as well. It, up times, it updates each time a request is made to your website, and so you would want to use it for retrieving data about the user's request. So if I had the query, I can then do something like, you just searched for, and then whatever they searched for. So in this case, it would be you just searched for web development or Flask tutorials. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, in a more practical use case, you would probably send the query to a database and return search results based on that. Um, but that's more that I'm going to get into right now. So another thing that you can do with Flask is read with uh, or retrieve multiple types of requests because by default, app.route is just using uh, or just doing a get request. So if you tried to post to it, for example, uh, so this is a get request. But if I tried to post to it, it doesn't do anything because we haven't set that up yet. So we can set that up like this. Um, and this tells Flask what types of requests that this endpoint can receive. So this can be any HTTP requests. Maybe you want to also retrieve put requests or delete requests. Uh, and so we're just going to have another function here. And with, uh, with a post request, it's more common to retrieve things like uh, HTML form data or maybe some API endpoint. And in those, it's very common to retrieve HTTP headers. And so here, in my HTTP client, PAW, I can set a header like this. Maybe uh, I'm getting the username from an HTML form and their password as well. Um, so I can read these HTTP headers with uh, also the request variable. Um, and then obviously you wouldn't want to display these to the user. Um, and I doubt there are many cases in which you would want to put them on the web page. So these are more now backend variables. You can use them at your own at, for whatever you want to do. And you can return, uh, maybe this is a login endpoint. You have successfully logged in. So now if we were to submit this HTTP request, make sure the website's still running. It'll say you've successfully logged in. And here it printed, this is my username, because that's the HTTP header that I used here. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of use cases for this, um, more than I'm going to get into in this talk. And with that, I think I'm going to end it here. So obviously, this, toss, this talk just touches the surface of Flask. There is a lot more to Flask um, than what I covered here. Uh, it's a very modern web framework and has all of the tools that you'll need to make a really nice website. I personally find the Flask documentation very useful, the official Flask documentation. Whoops. And uh, here you can scroll through it. You'll see nearly everything in Flask is documented. It has, it has a lot. Um, it's a very full-featured framework. Um, if you have any questions, I'm uh, JackCook36 on Twitter. And if you missed anything, again, my whole talk is on GitHub with uh, the manuscript and the final code that I probably ended up with. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Have fun at Local Hack Day.